everybody. This is the select board meeting for uh, Monday, December 2nd, 2019, 7.15 p.m. I am the chair, Diana Mahan. Uh, to my right, your left. John Hurd. Joe Curo. Dan Dunn. Steve DeCourcy. Adam Chaplin, town manager. <clears throat> Doug Heim, town council. Marie Propalco, board administrator. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to take one agenda item out of order because I know there's a another commitment that, that this person has. So I, with my colleague's uh, permission, I'd like to go to agenda item number 11. It's an appointment for board, board of Trust Fund Commissioners, Arif Padaria. Is Arif here? You can pull that down to you. You just wanted to say your name and just give a brief. Uh, what would you like? Uh, I'm Arif Padaria. I live in Arlington, um, not quite sure what uh, you'd like to know, but if there are any specific I questions, I'm happy you're to answer. Either your prior involvement um, on the trust fund committee, uh, uh, what it is you'd like to bring, you know, why sure. you're willing so to serve. So why don't I give you a bit of my background okay. and perhaps why I applied for this post. I previously was on the Arlington Finance Committee for a bit, about maybe a couple of years. Um, I've lived in town since uh, November of 2007. Um, I live in East Arlington. Uh, and then I want to be involved in Arlington, uh, per se, um, and uh, that's why I also was part of the Arlington Finance Committee. I just exchanged emails uh, today about rejoining the Arlington Finance Committee as well, uh, all on a volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. uh, by way of background, I'm a computer scientist, and uh, I build companies. Um, I've also got an MBA and finance degrees. I've been a Wall Street banker and a venture capitalist for 20 years. Uh, I've invested in over 200 companies and actively uh, managed and ran over 10 companies. I'm currently building a 3D printing company. I figured uh, when I saw this posting and I wrote to Adam, who I've known for several years now, that uh, what my involvement might be and uh, given my background and how I might be able to serve, um, given the finance background, given the tech background, given everything else in my involvement in town. So that's really the reason I'm here and sort of why I applied for this post, to be able to give back to my community. A um, Couple of uh, notes, uh, I guess I did also give back to the state of Massachusetts by way of uh, building the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center for uh, Duval Patrick at the time, who nominated me to help build that investment fund. So this is part of an ongoing exercise for me. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, um, and Mr. Chapdelaine, Speaks very highly of you. Uh, is there a motion? Move approval. By Mr. Dunn, seconded okay. by Mr. Hurd. Um, any further questions or comments, Mr. Dunn? Just thank you very much for volunteering. I know exactly the motivation you're talking about, and we really appreciate it. It makes the town work. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Look thank forward you. to yeah. seeing you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Uh, we'll now go back to uh, the agenda number one presentation by our P Director of Public Works. Uh, thank you, um, members of the board. Uh, Mike Rautemacher, <coughs> Public Excuse Works me. Director. Uh, I'd like to just take just a few minutes to uh, present to you uh, the, our recent results from some uh, drinking water sampling we did as, as a requirement of the DEP and the MWRA. Uh, once a year, the town is required to choose 15 homes that are greater at risk because of their age and the year of construction uh, for potential lead and copper presence. And uh, this is something we do every year. We, we take the, the resident takes the sample. We have, bring it to the lab. It's analyzed, and then we report the results back to the DEP, MWRA, and the community as a whole. Uh, uh, this year, unfortunately, two of the samples we took uh, had results above the DEP's allowable action limit for lead. Um, the, the, the action uh, limit level is 15 parts per billion, and we had two samples. One was at 17, and one was at 18. So. Um, not earth shattering, but still exceeded the action uh, the action level. So what this uh, requires us now to do is to um, have an education program to the community to let them know that uh, what we found and the presence of uh, of lead in these two samples. What was interesting is that 
we selected these homes based on, like I say, the age and the possible presence of a lead service line. Arlington does not have, as far as we know in our records, many. Uh, and this was one historically that could have had it. And when we got the results, we went actually and dug up the line in the street and it was in fact copper. <laughs> so the problem uh, is in the house itself. So even though Arlington's infrastructure was not the cause, it is still quite, um, it's a good idea to bring this to folks' attention because it, it highlights the fact that l the problem can be in your own house and not necessarily in the, under your front lawn or in the street. Uh, so essentially what this is going to require is that by the end of December we send out a letter. You might have a, a sample in your packet of um, the information. There's a brochure that will be mailed out to all households and then we will send another targeted mailing <coughs> to schools and pediatricians and um, <coughs> uh, populations at risk, younger, you know, possible populations. Uh, we'll send that information out. Uh, we will um, put some information with the water bill on a quarterly basis. Uh, and also we're going to be reaching out, we're going to scour our records uh, once again. We, we recently digitized them so it's easy to go through them and we found a handful of historic data where there might be some homes that have lead service. They may have been replaced, but um, our records indicate they still might be lead and we're going to reach out to those homes to let them know to see if they want to have their water tested. Uh, it, of those 15 homes, there were some that were lead, but their action level came in far below. So it's a hit or miss sometimes. Uh, the MWRA does put a um, chemical in the water to prevent or to reduce lead from leaching into the water. Uh, but um, if its presence is great enough, like, the, like in this one house, uh, it can still find its way. So uh, we, like I say, we'll be starting this education program. We'll be doing some outreach. We'll be contacting homes. And if residents are concerned, we will do uh, water testing. Uh, at their request as well. Um, it's, it's often, if you do have it in your home, it's often as simple as l letting your water run for a minute or two to flush that out before you start using water for the day until you can get your water line or your plumbing repaired. So these are all the things that we'll be, um, we'll, we'll be reaching out and letting uh, re residents and customers know. Okay, um, is there a motion? Move we'll receipt. Move we'll receipt by Mr. Carroll, second, second. by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd? Did you have a question? So I just have one question about the outreach sure. through the packet. See, when you say you're mailing it to residents, and that was the <coughs> part you said you're mailing it was part of the water bill? So we're going to send out a separate mailing to all households, aside, separate from the water bill. Okay. That, that has the pamphlet. That so that would reach tenants as well? It's going to go to every, okay. um, we're doing, uh, we're required to send it to all bill paying customers. Yeah but we're gonna actually just send it to all households, like, okay. uh, like you know, permit mail, you know, like every, every mailbox will get one. Yeah, yeah that, that was my only question, because it said to um, the bill payers. Mr. Don. So um, I can't remember us having this, kind of, this detect positive detection before. It has never uh, in my tenure um, come up. Uh, again, I think it's hit or miss. Like I say, the, the, the pipe wasn't in the street, it was in the plumbing. And actually, in this one particular house, a lot of the plumbing had been replaced. So it could, have, it could be in the fixture, certain fixtures up until uh, 1980 um, had the potential for um, lead or um, lead results like this. So. Uh, yeah, we haven't had it in the past. Okay, and so with these two, were you able to, did, they, did the households figure out exactly where it's coming from, or they still don't know? Uh, one, no, the one uh, that had the copper line, sh we, um, ex we explained that the problem wasn't in the street, and it was likely in the house, and that they contact a plumber. And the other home, uh, it was copper in the street. We couldn't see on the property itself, but there's, there's indication that it still might be a lead service line in the yard. We talked to the homeowner. They new and they didn't have the money to replace it and they would have been flushing the water and they've been dealing with it on their own. Hmm. But now that it's, um, now that we've sampled there and that we have um, a high result, we, we will probably get involved and try to assist that resident in getting that hmm. replaced. Thank you. Sure. Um, just a sort of case in point, um, you go out, it's detected, um, the homeowner is informed, it's pretty, costly um, they want to do it and they can't is 
are there any programs in Arlington, whether it's like weatherization or something else, that we can direct them to? Not tell them they're going to get it, but say, we know this is a kind of a big hit from talking to you, or? We're going to, um, so we're, we, part of uh, the requirements is until our results drop back below that, so the next time we sample, if we're, if we're below the actual limit, we're off the hook. Mm -hmm. I think we'll still continue some kind of education outreach. But until uh, we reach that limit, we're required to assist uh, residents. Seven percent of identified lead lines we're required to redo, re remove or replace seven percent of those. So, uh, in order to uh, help uh, residents who have this situation, we're going to be working in the next month or two to come up with some kind of uh, um, financial assistance. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a pretty low number that we're aware of. It's maybe 40 houses that we have not yet been able to get into to verify that they are no longer mm -hmm. lead um, services. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming that's even going to be less once we get in the houses because over time people have replaced with copper and whatnot. So I don't think it's going to be a huge task to uh, reach out to these um, households and help them. And then just, just a comment, it's no biggie or anything like that, reading everything. Um, I really like that you, um, at the end of the letter going out, um, you have an English and then several other languages that says this is an important notice. Please have someone translate words right. to that effect. Not to be like a s stickler or anything, but um, unless I see the, because I know a lot of people when they look at stuff, especially if it's not their language, bold really does jump out. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a cultural or ethnic and or, and or they're already printed, so maybe the next run, um, like the first two languages are bolded. And then the next two, three translations aren't. Now, I don't know if that's the nature of that, that if you bold a certain oh. language, it's a disrespectful thing to do. So um, yeah, we can it's look no into biggie. It. I just, you know, I think it's good. We can, adjust, we can, this time to correct it if we can. Okay. Uh, Mr. DeCourse. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a, a couple of questions. On the two houses, was there any resampling done? This we did, actually. Um, we resampled both of them. And the one household that had the copper line fell way below the limit on the second sample. Okay. And the house where we have not yet verified the, the portion of the line on private property, that came just a hair over the acceptable limit. Okay. So, right. But those samples uh, are not considered. Right. In, in, in having the reporting requirements, your first sample is the one that is, it, you go by. Sure, okay. And then on, I noticed that there was a letter to DEP, and I, th I think they probably got in touch with you as well. Are they satisfied with the steps that the, you're taking? Okay. They've, um, they've signed off on this approach. Good, thank you. Mr. Dunn? Oh, uh, so, sorry, maybe yeah, go on a second round. If, if that's okay, Mr. Carroll, <laughs> sorry. Um, it just got me really thinking on this. So you said that you selected the 15 based on likelihood to be a problem. Do you think that, and you also said that some of the records got like digitized and updated. Does that mean that like maybe we pulled some new people into the test pool and that maybe? That was would? part of the, yeah. In this mo the most recent round, we were able to further refine the pool that we selected from. So we just, so we could have just really narrowed it down and really got Correct. It. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That is cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Um, Thank you for this. I, um, I appreciate that we're helping the, the residents where uh, the elevated levels were identified. This question may not be for you. It actually might be my colleague knows this better. But the fact that we've identified the, lead, uh, the elevated lead levels there, does that then become a required disclosure for those homeowners when they go to sell their properties? I, I don't know that. Uh, don't give advice. <laughs> What's that? That's don't a, give advice. You always tell lawyers not to give advice yeah. in public. No, that's what I'm saying. That's, I've, I've been, we're, I work for a lot of attorneys. Yeah, but, okay. but that, I'm, just, that's I'm just curious, so maybe, I think it is yeah. important that we yeah. could try to help be, folks but, and just because I, I could just no, no, I, yeah, yeah. some things while yeah. I'm down I think w that probably will be defined where this is kind of, yeah. you know, it, this is a new process in terms of, not a new process in terms of testing, but a new process in terms of how you tested it. Mr. Dunn's comments, maybe that's why we got two really high hits yeah. because it's a different process you're doing as well as you're going to um, be discussing and put in place, you know, if we can give relief to homeowners. Um, so maybe that could be another question in terms of um, just so the board's edification. Um, is that something 
that when you're talking about it, that yes, you've got to let the homeowner know that needs to be disclosed or maybe not. So, okay. and I'd bug attorney Heim, but no, I'm not going to ask him tonight because I didn't ask him to look into it. Um, any further, did, did I cut you off, Mr. Carroll? Nope. No? Nope. Um, any further questions or comments? If not, on a mo motion, move receipt by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Tell everyone down the yard, be safe. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Um, again, with my colleague's permission, uh, we have a public hearing, agenda item 10, scheduled for 7.30 p.m. It is 7.31. Vote MWRA debt shift. Ms. Winstanley, you can introduce yourself and bring that microphone down. <laughs> I'm when you follow Mr. Rodemacher, that's what you have to do. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, Mr. Town Manager. Um, we're here for our annual hearing requi required uh, by statute with respect to the board's decision as to whether there should be classification in the town of Arlington. Uh, before um, Mr. Tierney goes through um, the pamphlet, the booklet that was provided to you with all the relevant data, and we did receive uh, approval from DOR just this afternoon. That's why you just got it. Mr. Tierney is here, the director of assessment. Mr. Feely from the board, and Dana Mann, who's a data controller uh, in the Board of Assessors' Office. I'd just like to go over a couple of things. Um, uh, page five, and I reminded Mr. Tierney that last year you asked us to number the pages. We will, we promise you. <laughs> <laughs> um, on page five, uh, we have the information as to what would happen if there was classification and the shift. Um, so that you know, fiscal year values in 2020 have risen again substantially. Single family homes went up nine point, no, page five is the. What does it say at the top, residential exemption no. or something else? Page four. Okay. Oh, page four yeah, that. First. Okay. I counted the first page as page one, okay. Um, singles went up 9.71%, condos went up 10.5%, twos and threes went up uh, approximately 9%, respectively. Um, the very last page, uh, and so that you know, we posted the values for public disclosure on November 18th to 22nd. The very last page of this, I think, is really important, and I think it's important <clears throat> for taxpayers to know that if you look, and we don't have the tax rates for fiscal 2020 for Belmont, Winchester, and Lexington, but we would expect that they would go up comparable um, as Arlington's have. If you look at Arlington's tax rate compared to these three other towns, I think the town is doing a great job. Um, I think the town is well run. Um, the infrastructure is well maintained. We have good school systems and uh, green spaces. And we're substantially below the neighboring communities. So I think that's important for people to understand that um, Arlington uh, is doing a, jo a good job of trying to maintain costs and expenses while providing people with the high quality of, of life here. So I think that's pr pretty um, illustrative of uh, situation. Um, just on that, um, for everyone at home who doesn't have the book yet, could I just? Sure. Um, um, indulge, maybe for 2019, read Arlington Sure. Uh, in 2019, and this, so that you know, these taxes are on a value of $821,000, which is the average single family home value um, for 2020. Um, in 2019, the taxes were $8,462. Belmont, same value, $12,720. Winchester, same value, $13,082. And Lexington, which I'm fairly certain has classification, mm -hmm. is $14,876 on the same value. Those are significant differences uh, when you look at the quality of life we have here in town, which I think is great. I mean, that's my infomercial from the Board of Thank Assessors. You. What did you Mr. Dunn. What sorry. did you see the average was again, sorry, for this year? The yeah. average house size, house, house value? 821,000 single. Thank you. Um, if I could introduce, yes. if any questions for me, I'll introduce Mr. Karen. Mm -hmm. Paul. <laughs> Good evening, board. Uh, I would just like to mention uh, two of my office workers, Mary McMakin and Jennifer O'Rourke, do a lot of work behind the scenes. Uh, they're very helpful. And obviously, I'd like to mention Bob Greeley, who cannot make it here tonight. Uh, so we'll start. Uh, page two. Uh, we, to start off, to calculate FY20 levy limit, we start with the nine, FY19 levy limit. 
at 2.5% under Prop 2.5. Uh, we add in new growth of $816,617. And then we add in the 2020 override, which is $5,500,000. That'll give us our FY20 le levy limit. So we add in the school debt exclusion, the water and sewer debt, to give us a total of $133,376,594. That's the maximum that we have to raise. The town did raise $133,350,155. We divide that by the total taxable assessed value in town to give us a proposed tax rate for FY20 of $11.06. Turn the page. This gives us our residential um, factor computation. This will give us the numbers we need to explain the residential shift if we're going to go to a commercial rate. So if we just turn to page five, where the chart is on. Um, so if we, if we take a 5% shift from the residential to commercial, the average commercial, industrial, personal property taxes will go up to $276, and the residential will, will see a savings of $15.93. So if we take that maximum shift and go to 150%, the commercial, industrial, personal property taxes will rise $2,765, and the residential will see a savings of $159.29. <coughs> Turn the page to the residential exemption. So not many communities in Massachusetts that have the residential exemption. They're usually uh, in towns where there's a lot of vacation homes or apartments. Uh, just a few of Boston, Cambridge, Chelsea, and Brookline do have the residential exemption. Uh, if we adopted a 20% residential exemption, the tax rate would, be, would rise from $11.06 to $13.50. Uh, the break-even point so no one would see a difference in their taxes would be $873,426. Uh, we have approximately 17% of the homes that would see an uh, increase in their taxes through no fault of their own. So I have a little chart up there to just show you if we adopted a 5% resident residential exemption, uh, the new tax rate would be 1158. If we adopted a 10%, it would be 1216 and 15% would be $12.80. The next page just shows the, the uh, historical tax rates in town. The next page is the LA-4. Uh, it's the number of parcels for each class of property and their corresponding assessed values in total. Turn the page. This is our growth page um, and abatements. As you can see, if you look in the lower right-hand column, our growth for the year was $816,617. Where is that? Um, On the right. Lower right. In the middle. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Next page. So we have the year-over-year -year fiscal 20 versus fiscal 19 comparison. As, Ms. As Mary spoke of earlier, uh, single families went up 9.71%, condos 10.5%. You can read all the values all the way down the column. I have a question that's just, if I may. Sure. Um, does, and if it does where, um, the uh, Ugar property lie in here is that under open space commercial or are are, are they in there are they on the tax roll that yes they are okay. it's on, the, on the land yeah so they're in here some yes okay thank you welcome uh, the next page is just our pie chart to see where the tax burden is going as you can see it's mostly on the property taxes the next page the tax rate components uh, it's just a breakdown of exactly where all the, uh, how we calculate the tax rate in total. Um, 
versus uh, against the levy, two and a half percent, uh, our growth, the override, the water and debt exclusion, and the school debt exclusion all contribute to the tax rate, and that's their corresponding uh, amounts. Uh, below that is the a copy over from the first page, the levy, 2.5% uh, growth, maximum levy. Uh, the levy increased this year, 7.46%. Um, as we go down the, the page a little further, we do have the average assessed single family as well as the average single family taxes. They are now $9,126. And then the last page, this is when Stanley O'Connor just went over. Chart. <coughs> I know, I will have, I will have at, these, um, sorry. The, the 2016 uh, assessed single family at uh, 585,000 and four year, years later we're at 825,000. So I know what, where my husband, his pain comes from the past few years. He's been opening his tax bill. It's been an aggressive market. Mm -hmm. First, is there a motion? Are questions first? Mr. Dunn? Yeah, so, uh, I don't know who the right person to answer this is, but on the water sewer, is did we talk about lowering that component for this? I thought the plan that we had voted for was going to lower the component for this year. Or did I misremember? <clears throat> we talked about um, needing to adjust rates sometime soon, early, late winter, early spring to then make an adjustment uh, next December. Because we're not actually paying this year. When the first tranche of big high school debt rolls on. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, any other questions or a motion to uh, Mr. Carroll? I just had one, one question. Um, I noticed that under all of the real estate categories that the there's only one that's decreased in um, assessed value, which is um, residential land. Is that, that's undeveloped land, is yes. it? Yes, yes. Um, does that tend to be kind of a lean, leading indicator that, that there might be downward pressure on, on um, other real estate components? I would have to, I'm not sure. I'd have to really look into that before I answer is that. that. Typ I don't remember. Does that typically... Uh, some of the, some of these everything else I've you know this is consistent with fewer we've seen yeah, exactly. you know? yeah. there's, there's maybe and now they're unbuildable now they're unbuildable yeah, yeah I see there the count was a little higher last year for fiscal yeah. 19 versus fiscal 20 yeah you, you sell you sell four lots for 500 grand each and that's there you go okay thank you okay um, this is a public hearing is there anyone in the audience if not, a uh, motion by one of my colleagues to set the property tax classification tax rate. Uh, move approval of, what do you call it, zero adjustment? Is it factor two? of one. Sorry, zero factor, factor of one. one. Yeah. Uh, okay, you. Well, Second by Mr. Dunn. <laughs> it changed your first name. Seconded by Mr. Hurd to vote and set the property tax classification tax rate at a factor of one. Single tax uh, rate, yes. For the tax rate. Um, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion to approve by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurt. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, uh, please have the board sign the LA-5, please. Do we have a separate vote that we have to take on the uh, debt shift? Correct. It's listed Correct. on the agenda, yeah. I think. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. To approve it again? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Adam, what, do you know what the, or Doug, or Are we what's the form of that motion? Just affirmatively setting okay. the MWRA debt shift at $5,593,112. Okay. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further public comment? Any questions, comments from my colleagues, if not on a motion uh, by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn to vote the MWRA debt shift, 5.5 million, et cetera. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Um, and we will now go to our consent agenda. Um, thank you so much. Minutes of meetings, November 18, 2019, for approval, change of manager, all alcohol license, Doug. 
Jembis, Not Your Average Joe's, Reappointments, Transportation Advisory Committee, Melissa LaBay, Scott Smith, Reappointment, Arlington Cultural Council, Kimberly Harding for approval, cause and event, Arlington 2025 K race on 53120. Uh, for approval to sandwich boards for Sarcoma Foundation of America's a Capella Festival to belt out cancer from January 10th to the 24th. A request special one day beer and wine license 121419 Robbins Library Reading Room for a private event. Request free parking for local holiday shopping. Uh, first, is there a motion to approve? Move approval Mr. subject to all conditions set forth. Mr. Carroll, seconded by. Second. Mr. Dunn, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, if, if, if uh, the board would agree, I'd like to just update them, make one minor change to the minutes. Uh, in section 14, the talking about the policy of the changing of the orders of the article in town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, my int the, int uh, the intent of my motion was not just to set the order, but also to say that the discretion still is with, with the board's office. And so I just wanted the, mo I didn't want the motion to be misread that that was an absolute order mm -hmm. and that there was still discretion. And so if, uh, I would, if mm -hmm. it's okay, I'd like to update the, to say that the, 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 um, the general order of the articles for the 2020 town meeting warrant with discretion still held by the by the office, which okay. is I think what I was by the was select it, board office. Yeah, and there's something I think we discussed <coughs> at the meeting, but I wanted to it to be captured in the minutes. Yeah, right. and it's cleared and spelled out. Is that okay, yeah. Mrs. Kropelka? Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone here for those agenda items? Um, Mr. Carroll, will you take that as part of your motion to I, amend I the minutes will. as Mr. Yes. Dean? Okay, friendly amendment. Um, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Um, request, uh, agenda item 12, request Tango Restaurant Late Night Event, 1231.19 to 1.120. Um, uh, Mrs. Kropelka, have they done this before? Yes. Okay, because yes, normally we, we like to see them in here. My mind went blank. So since they've done it before, we know. Okay. Is there a motion? Move approval. By Mr. Hurd, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, any questions or comments? If not, on a motion, move approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous vote. Citizens open forum. Then I'll read the preamble real quick, sorry. Come right up. Um, except, un, uh, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should also be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Just your name. Hi, Beth Malofchek, uh, Russell Street, and I am a um, town meeting member. I um, made a special effort to get here tonight without slipping or falling no. because I was afraid you wouldn't have anybody, so I'm really happy to be um, Jane Q. Public tonight. If ACMI would be so kind as to show that I'm the only one in the <laughs> audience, I would appreciate that. So I'm here to remind the select board about the importance of not mistaking force and the use of force for leadership and the uh, past deployment of police at public meetings apparently to inhibit remarks. This remains a concern of mine. The select board has yet to acknowledge this past practice or to say whether or not it's a standard operating procedure. I hope that at some point that would happen. I refer, of course, to the FOIA documents, the email from a former colleague of yours, a select board member. It's now posted on the internet where this select board member at the time is writing to the town manager encouraging the deployment of police at public meetings. Again, I think that inhibits democracy rather than protecting it. Um, otherwise, I'm here because I am interested in what the town manager is going to have to say about the community development block grants, but my remarks come before that, so I will only say that there are many of us in town who are very concerned about the need for an expansion of affordable housing, higher earmarks for affordable housing, the inclusion of potential ownership opportunities for low and moderate income people, and whether the diversity task force group will be included in that list of groups that you enumerate for, I believe, HUD in the documents posted online. Uh, there is some interest in having the diversity task force group included. I remain concerned, as do others, by a lack of transparency. Perhaps it's 
an appearance of the lack of transparency in this town hall administration. That includes how public remarks are noted in the minutes, as well as whether or not everything is posted, both those testimonies that are sent in an email and handed over in these chambers. I would like to know whether all of the public testimony given since September on the issue, on the racism issues that have been discussed in this chamber, have they all been posted? Are they all electronically available? Because we'd like them to be. Um, I am concerned about the format for public forums as evidence that the January 10th housing forum also recently as the uh, Broadway Plaza redo. The plan was not presented to the public with an opportunity for questions. Rather, the public is required to go around to four or five stations and ask their questions. I'm not an architect. I'm not a town planner. I don't know how to read those things. I see green colored things that are trees. I see a photograph of a bench. I remark and how nice it looks. And I'm told, oh, that's just there for a depiction. We're not actually using that bench. That seems unhelpful at best. Um, so Broadway Plaza, I remain concerned about the tree canopy. I wonder if you have included in the plan addressing the heat islands that are adjacent at Russell Parking. And I am, of course, concerned with preserving Veterans Memorial Park where it is, right next to the fire department, so that those people who have made the ultimate sacrifice are there where we can see them memorialized, you know, anytime we're driving by or walking by. I um, remain concerned that one of the original plans for the Broadway Plaza redo included moving Veterans Park to Cook's Hollow. I'm a user of Cook's Hollow. It's my neighborhood park. Thanks to the benign neglect of DPW or the select board, I don't know who does not do maintenance there. We have three broken benches. We would like them fixed. They've been broken for going on five years now. It needs lumber, screws, and elbow grease. We don't need an MAPC plan um, or anybody else's plan. We just would like the benches replaced. Okay, thank you. And I gave you a little over four minutes because you're you so, so nice to come down. I feel so bad. I want everyone to know that she came through this weather. And she's I'm, here really, tonight, so. I'm really, I'm um, really. So, and I, I, I just because I have to say in accordance with what Citizens Open Forum is. I understand. I, in terms of your questions, I would anticipate if you called the select board office, the answer would be yes. All those have been posted. Thank you. But pl please get that officially. I'm just um, telling you that. And um, I know that um, the manager and myself on behalf of the board would definitely follow up on all those suggestions and hopefully get some answers either through the processes that we, ha we have the hearings or whether there's... Um, a piece of uh, correspondence or something that addresses that, I'll be sure that you get a copy of that. Thank you very much. Thank you so I appreciate much. it. You can Thank get you home all. safely. I'm not telling you have to leave now. I'm just saying <laughs> when you do <laughs> go, you. go safely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, citizens Open Forum is closed. Um, we'll now go to traffic rules and orders, uh, agenda item 13. Mr. Chapterling. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this agenda item is requesting that the board formally adopt an updated citizen participation plan uh, for the town CDBG program. So a citizen participation plan is something that's required for any HUD entitlement community, which Arlington is. So it's through that HUD entitlement that we receive CDBG funding. We've had a plan for many years, uh, but the plan hasn't been updated since the mid-90s. Uh, the Department of Planning and Community Development uh, upon receiving some recommendations from the North Suburban Consortium that we're a part of uh, for some updates that we need to make to maintain conformance with statute. Uh, took that as the initiative to make those updates to conform with statute, as well as making further revisions to conform more closely with what our communications policy says today about how we engage and communicate with the public. So uh, Jenny Raitt, working with first Julie Wayman, and now Brian Nichols, who's taken uh, Julie's place and who will bring, I think, to the next board meeting um, to meet the board, uh, have put together this plan. Um, it's added in things such as focus groups and surveys, uh, working with the, uh, groups of residents who are most directly impacted by CDBG funding. Um, these things have actually already been done over the past year, so we've been putting this plan into action but need it to be formally adopted uh, by the select board. Uh, I know Ms. Mal uh, Malafchik just mentioned um, the addition of the diversity task group uh, to the list of groups that we'll reach out to 
Uh, the two groups that are mentioned are the Arlington Human Rights Commission and the Disability Commission. I see no issue with adding the diversity task group if the board would like to propose that amendment tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, um, I think this, um, this document reflects the process, again, that we're already undertaking. Uh, it's not specifically called out in this document, but I think the board recalls that we have for a number of years had a subcommittee, publicly posted subcommittee, that meets and goes over all of the funding requests that are made by the various groups across town. Last year, for the first time, added three citizens to that group uh, to expand participation and engagement with the public on trying to make sure that we were funding what we should be funding via CDBG. So I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have and would ask for your favorable action. Um, I, I will say, um, having returned to the CDBG subcommittee, um, I really found the three citizens um, who joined the group really helped the process. I agree. Um, and, and I really was impressed by they literally had gone through every single proposal and when we were going through the guidelines in terms of what rating we give a particular service, what its use, its need is, um, every time I sort of was at an impasse, um, they pretty much re remediated all that and said, well, I gave it this number under the guideline because this is how, when I read the proposal, this was the benefit or maybe this wasn't the benefit, so it went down a point. Um, and it really streamlined the process. I mean, we got it done in two, two meetings, and I think the second meeting was uh, not the full two hours we had put aside. So um, I'm very thankful for that, and I'm, I, I know we'll continue with that on the future. So I just wanted to let my colleagues know that um, the three citizens were really um, right up to speed on everything and took it as seriously the import that they should. So, And I was really impressed with that because... I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> they really did read everything. Um, uh, so first we have to formalize kind of a process we're already doing, but we want to um, call it out because of HUD and CAPER and all that other thing. By, by the board adopting this, we could formally state to HUD that this is our updated citizen participation plan. Okay, is there a motion to move approval to adopt the CDBG, uh, the Town of Arlington citizen participation plan by... I, I, I move approval with the uh, suggested amendment of uh, adding the diversity task group as one of the um, uh, groups uh, Human to, rights to, to which uh, outreach will be made. Um, I think these are they're called out under number three, A3. Mm -hmm. So adding to A3, the diversity task group is one of the organizations. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. DeCourcy. Any further questions, comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Um, setting our future board meetings. There we go. We're going to aim for January till March. <coughs> and then we have the obligatory first Monday in April um, organizational meeting. First Monday in April after the local election. And Mr. Chapterlane? And we, um, both the select board and the redevelopment board have talked about having a joint meeting. Mm. Um, if we could add on talking about what nights might be good for that or, or any, any calendar time might be good for that meeting, I'd appreciate that. Okay. Okay, so our last meeting in December is the 16th. So uh, how does 6 and 20 look? I don't it's no good because 20? that's MLK. Oh, it is? Okay. I don't have a calendar. I have my phone calendar. I mean, six I'm totally on board with. Okay. 20. Six and up 27. And we can always add another meeting if we need it. Um, but we shouldn't. And usually it's when we get into the warrant article hearings, but. When is the warrant close? Right? All right. So six yeah, and 20. 31st. 31st, okay. And 27. And the warrant closes on the 31st? Yes. So that works well in case the board needs to act mm -hmm. on any warrant articles to place so on the warrant. Does that mean that we could make the 14th, uh, or sorry, the 13th as a potential ARB? Yeah. Well, well how, how do people look on the 13th? All right. How about the 13th? I'm just trying, uh, Madam Chair, I'm totally open to other ideas. I'm just trying to figure out mm -hmm. a list of dates that yeah, we can provide. Yeah, a list would be great, and then we can share that with the, the ARB. Um, are we looking for a list of dates, ARB, to be Monday night since we both meet on Mondays? I mean, I think whatever the board feels like its availability is, they, they, I, I, my understanding is they're willing to be flexible on night of the week um, if this board is as well. 
Well, is there any other night in January that looks good to someone that isn't a Monday? Like, um, how many days do, is two enough? Uh, two or three is fine, yeah. Okay. All right, how about the week of the 13th? Is there any night Monday through Thursday that's a problem for anyone, that is a conflict for anyone on the Thursdays. Sport? Thursdays. I'm, I'm okay. going to the library trustees on the Tuesday. You have that? Yeah, I'm going to the library trustees okay. on that Tuesday evening. All right, so we'll say, third. how about 15? 13 and 15 in January for a possible ARB meeting. And then um, what about the 22nd or 29th in January? If this happens, I'd like to get it done in January. Does anyone have a? Um, 22nd. Um, I, I would be No, out. that's fine. So, uh, oh. Or if you want to say a different night in January, so we can give them three dates. Oh, no, I take it back. 22nd works. I, right. I, I apologize. So, yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to be, <clears throat> I'm asking for a lot of your time, asking for you some of your time on the 22nd for the race equity and leadership training that the National League of Cities is going to do, so if we could, if we could actually hold some time on that day as well. That evening or during uh, the day? Maybe late afternoon into evening. Twenty ninth? Twenty two. No, no, we're trying to find. Cover. All right, how about thirteen, fifteen, twenty nine? That's good. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. So just so I didn't get a chance. So twenty seventh and twenty ninth are both maybe for me, but I think okay. it's just I don't, I don't I think those are the right dates and it's just a matter of how it'll right. work. And just let them know order of preference for the board is probably 13, 15, <clears throat> 29 is the least preferential. Yep. Okay, um, so we're meeting on the 27th in January. What say my colleagues for February? The 10th and the 24th. When is? Uh, the holiday is the 17th. 17th. Yeah, 10th and 24th, I'm fine. That's fine, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. School vacation will be the week of um, the 16th of, of uh, President's Day, I think. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, and now March. We our last meeting is February 24th, so March 9:23. Is that too soon? Oh, well, we have to meet on the. Oh, no, I'm thinking April. Sorry. People talk about March. I apologize. 923. 923? Does that work? Yeah. Yep. Well, before we set the 23, um, what's going to be our print date and all that for town meeting? Um, I would probably say it would be the week of the 23rd. But, um, or it might be the 19th. <coughs> Madam Chairman. If we don't have a special town meeting, we only have to do it seven days before, but if we include a special town meeting, it has to be a 14 days. So any chance of a special town meeting during town meeting? Yeah. Attorney Hyde? Pro yes. Probably. Yeah. So that's, I think, we'll probably the week before, but you know what? I'll let you know. I'll figure it out tomorrow on the calendar. So are we setting right now? I mean, we can always add or, or change if we have to. So am I hearing 923 or no? Or am I hearing? Can, you can still have a meeting on the 23rd if you yeah. want. And... Okay, so 9 and 23 in March. And then the first Monday after the local is the organizational meeting. But so there we are. We're good on that to go, right, what, Mrs. What's that date? Um, assuming it's going to be April 6th. When's our local election this year? I don't even know. April 4th. It is the 4th, so it would be the 6th. We should set that one too, just. Okay, so we'll set this April 6th also as our first meeting in April. Council has. Attorney Hyde. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carroll. Um, just as a, a forecast for the board, I, I expect a large warrant again this year um, based on some early conversations that residents have initiated along with some things that are sort of our standard slate of articles and things that we might anticipate. So we'll, one thing to keep an eye out for is how much 
will be pressed for in terms of Warren article hearings. I expect it to be as large as last year, if not, if not larger. So just for the uh, chair's information and the rest of the board, uh, these dates will be <coughs> quite, quite full. Mm -hmm. And maybe what we could do is, uh, once the warrant closes, <coughs> just sort of ballpark um, how many of the warrant articles will require select board hearings, how many we had last year. Um, and that will kind of give me a guide about whether we need to have a conversation about adding an additional Monday and or additional Wednesday. Of course. Thank you, Madam Chair. In whatever, since you're so entrenched with them, you may say, you know, um, this one may be kind of your, your whole night or not. I, I also just want to give the board a sort of forecast that I expect that some of the Warren articles may be particularly lengthy discussions uh, or at least involve a lot of public engagement as well as some articles uh, are pretty large discussions if they actually end up getting filed. I've got at least one article, for example, that may be submitted that's about proposition three and a half, uh, increasing the town's ability to, uh, giving the town flexibility to increase its levy limit above the two and a half percent. So if all those things coalesce together, it'll be a little bit like a nor'easter in terms of the volume of warrant discussions that we'll have and how intense some of them may be. So thank you, Madam Chair, I appreciate that. Appreciate letting us know what might be coming down. Excuse me, Diane, mm -hmm. I just want to remind we, as we haven't had a definite date yet, but I think we're going to have early voting for the five days from the 24th of February through the 28th, and if they want to do it on a Saturday, I'm willing to do it on a Saturday, so. But it certainly will be, it's definitely five days. Okay. Hopefully if we need heat at that point, we'll have heat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chaplain? No, okay. I take the heat I from this room sometimes, man. I heat the whole town hall. But anyways, okay, so right now we're tentatively set with that, and yep. we'll have further discussions. Mr. Chaplain will get back to us on the three dates from the redevelopment board, and then after the warrant is closed, uh, Attorney Heim will supply us all with it. Just like a, kind of a quick email. I'm not asking for a big, we're not asking for a big, long thing, but just. Of course. Um, and then I'll get some sense with uh, Mr. Dunn, the town manager, and Attorney Heim in terms of, um, if we do need to discuss several of the dates, and we'll do that sooner rather than later, but not until after the warrant closes January 31st, if that's okay. Great. Um, correspondence received. Is there a move receipt? So moved. Mr. Kiro, seconded by Second. Mr. Hurd. Oh, the we have Congratulations. Yes. To the town manager and the, the Joan team. Roman, really. So to and to Joan Roman. Yeah. Town report contest. Uh, any further discussions and comments? If not, on motion, move receipt by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka? No. Attorney Hine? No new business. Town manager, chapter line? Uh, I'll say, uh, echoing the thanks that the board gave to Mr. Rademacher at the start of the meeting, uh, thanks to him and the DPW for the great work they did last night. I know people were very pleased to see the black roads and I think a pretty, you know, all things considered an easy morning considering the conditions. Uh, and I also want to announce uh, this went out via an Arlington alert and a town notice, but given tomorrow's forecast, uh, we're going to put a parking ban in place until 10 a.m., uh, as well as delaying town office and library openings until 10 a.m. If conditions warrant, we may push that out, but we figured that it's easier to push out than to pull back if conditions don't warrant that. Uh, I also, I probably shouldn't do this, but I will. I just received a text from Kathy uh, Bodie, Superintendent Bodie, saying the school would be canceled tomorrow as well. So I think we, we fared well in the first round of this storm, but the second round is looking a little more unforgiving. So, um, and trash uh, pickup? Thank you. And tra trash pickup. This is actually the first time JRM reached out proactively to us to cancel trash pickup. Usually it's the other way around, but I'm guessing with what they dealt with today and foreseeing tomorrow, uh, Delayed one day, so it'll just like a holiday week starting on Tuesday, it'll be de delayed one day for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. And I did have a brief conversation with the town manager. <clears throat> we, I got the, a lot of mostly electronic Facebook instant messages um, around street su sweeping in East Arlington, but I did ask the manager um, through GPW tonight, it, as well as tomorrow with the tra uh, parking bin in effect, it's probably a total of 20 to 30 streets 15 to 20 on each side of Magnolia and Thorndike, um, <clears throat> especially with snow removal. If uh, for some reason um, everybody doesn't really stay home, there's a lot of parking down there to sort of come up with a plan for um, the next storm yeah. in terms of, because I know years ago um, 
Mr. Chapdelaine was here and, and Mr. Sullivan was when we were just getting hit by so many storms and there was a dedicated, people had like two nights notice, we're going curb to curb and they had a pretty efficient operation with a police officer, a tow truck, DPW, but they did everything not to, I think they towed maybe four cars, that whole thing. But there's been a lot of concerns about, so I've, I've just asked the manager and Mr. Rademacher just to observe what it's like tomorrow. Yep. Hopefully it's just a few errant cars here and there. Um, so thank you. I, I cut you off on your new business. Nope, I was done. Okay. Thank Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to, to mention the week before Thanksgiving, I um, participated in the, the food drive that the Board of Youth Services ran um, in connection with all the elementary schools, the Audison Middle School, and the Gibbs. And um, that was just a, a, a great effort by all of the schools coming together students uh, donated a lot of food um, and was at, down at Arlington Eats. Um, so that covered us through Thanksgiving. What I did also want to mention, and, and sometimes you, you talk about this during, uh, you know, during food drives, we think about uh, distributing food and collecting it, and, and often the question comes up, what do you do the rest of the year? And one person I want to recognize tonight who makes a huge difference the rest of the year is Deanne DuPont. She was just recognized by the Patriots as a difference maker um, for her work at, at Foodlink, and it's just really an appropriate time for, for that recognition. Um, their motto, as we all know, is rescue food, nourish our community, and, and they distribute food to 46 agencies in 15 communities, doing it all throughout the year. Deanne is gonna be recognized at the last Patriots home game, and um, I just wanna congratulate her for that. Mr. Dunn? Uh, the snow tomorrow has uh, really crushed my dreams because tomorrow was the, my favorite day of the whole year, which is the audit committee. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to meet tomorrow. <laughs> I actually was kind of sad about that. I had, I've had so much interesting information. I've never meetings. met an auditor who is so excited about his reports before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, any further new business? No, that's it. And we'll leave it to Mr. Chapdelaine and um, his reschedule. office to reschedule yeah. that. But I do like the early morning start. Um, I think that works well for everyone. Mr. Hurd? No. Mr. Carroll? I, I just had one, one thing I want to raise. We received some recent correspondence about the um, rapidly dilapidating home over by CVS. It's not the first time we've gotten, we've gotten correspondence from the church there. We've gotten correspondence from, from a number of folks. And, and I was wondering if uh, it might be worth considering whether it's appropriate to have an agenda item at some point to understand what tools are available to the town mm -hmm. to address mm -hmm. a situation like this. Um, it, it's, it's gotten pretty bad, so. Yeah. I, I will um, actually ask because I'm a member of that church and this has been a bee in my bonnet for so long. Um, if Mr. Dunn could okay. um, work with Mr. Chaplain and Attorney Heim, and if it is appropriate, I would love for it to be. I don't think I have any, um, in terms of the night discussing it, have any conflict because I do derive no financial. But just for process sake, okay. if it is an agenda item, Mr. Dunn and um, as vice chair, but we'll then do. acting chair. So I'm going to let you follow up on that. Okay. Okay. And uh, thank you. I've always wanted to bring it up, but it seems so self-serving. I know who sent the letter. <laughs> um, any other new business? Nope. If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn by. So moved. Mr. Dunn, seconded by. Second. Mr. Hurd, all those in favor say aye. All those aye. opposed, unanimous aye. vote. Our next meeting is December 16th. At what time? At 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock p.m. Unusual time. Um... Just pointing out because it is an unusual yeah. time. Yes. Because if we don't yes. say it, then I'm going to show up at 7:15. Okay. No, it's <laughs> unusual time. It's six o'clock, and and traditionally there is no citizens open for us. So um, we'll do the business that needs to be done as of the end of the month. So see everyone at the next meeting, six o'clock, December 16th. We are adjourned.